TJ, welcome to our new Online Girls Club. We're recording here at Woodland Church just for you girls because we can't get together every week. But guess what? You don't have to attend Woodland in order to be part of our club. So if you have some friends and you go, man, this is really fun and a lot of cool things that we're going to be doing and getting prizes, get them to send an email or a text or let us know. Give us addresses and we'll send them out. Some really cool stuff. Guess what? In the mail, you're going to be getting a package each week or a letter or something with your name on it from Woodland Church. So you're going to find your name on it. You go inside and look inside the package. And this week you're going to be getting, well, oh, I can't tell you that. That's cheating. I tell you what I will do. I'll give you a sneak peek. So in front of me, I have some things in the package. In the package, you're going to be getting a letter. The letter is from a sponsors here at Woodland Church. And we miss you so very much. And we love you too and know that we are praying for you. So we're going to be telling you about that. We're going to be telling you about the prizes and the points and all the fun activities we're going to be doing online. At the very bottom, you'll see a special thing highlighted that tells you to go look for the next time that we get together and it'll give you some instructions on what to do. So make sure that you read your letter all the way through so you know what we're going to be doing. Now, if you're in elementary in your packet, you're going to be getting a devotion sheet. Your devotion sheet will tell you devotion. So I know it's April and this says April at the top and we're already part way through April. That's okay. You're going to go down to April 6th or 7th or 8th, whatever your day is that you're on. You're going to find that, do the devotion, read the scripture verse, get someone to help you if you need to, then get them to sign off on that. Then you can either email me, get your parents to text message me, text message the church, let them know with your name um, at the end of each week which ones you've done, and you're going to be getting points for that, which all those points are going to rack up for cool prizes. Girls only. This is a girls club. If you're a teenager and you're in my stars class, you're going to be getting one that says for teens or 11 and 12 year olds only just for your group. And your day book is going to have the same thing, devotions and scriptures. Get someone to sign off on it when you do it. Same thing. Text message, email me, send it on Facebook, something. Let us know that you've done it and I'll mark it down so that you get your points and prizes. Last in your packet, you're also beginning an activity sheet. Okay. Now our activity sheet, activity sheet will go with our lesson for each week. So we'll have this lesson and this is really cool because this one, even if you're elementary or a teenage girl, you can still do this. In fact, this one is teaching some drawing techniques and some skills. I'm not really good at drawing. And those of you who know me know I draw stick figures. I don't do much more than that. I color a little bit every now and then with some crayon, but that's it. You're going to look at your activity sheet, do the activity pages. This, uh, this week, we're going to do two activity pages. Do the other page. Same thing. Let me know. Send me a message. Send, us through, send it through Facebook or through our email. Let us know. And again, it racks up for points and prizes, which is really, really cool. Hey, girls. So we want to get started with some really fun stuff in our lesson. I tell you what, pause the video really, really, really quick. Just set it on pause and then go grab your Bible. Go find a Bible. I know you have one somewhere in the house. Go grab your parents' Bible. Go grab your Bible. Bring it right back. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Hey girls, welcome back. I hope you had a little bit of time to go get your Bible. If not, remember to pause and go get your Bible. Okay, so today's Bible verse is from Psalms 90. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our Bibles. And one of the easy ways I remember to find Psalms is about in the middle of the Bible. So I take my Bible and I open it up to about the middle. If you come to Proverbs or Isaiah, that's okay. Just flip back a little bit and backwards a little bit and you'll find Psalms. Then remember that the books of the Bible are broken up into chapters. So we're going to be going to Psalms chapter 90. So quickly flip over, find chapter 90 if you need to, pause the video until you find it. And then we're going to go down to verse 17. Because remember the chapters are broken down into verses, makes it easier to use. Okay? Psalms 90 verse 17 says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. This time, I want you to say it with me, okay? Everybody together. You can annoy your brother or your sister or somebody else around you. That's okay. Say it. In fact, let's say it in the quietest voice possible. You ready? May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Psalms 90, 17. So your first challenge for this week is going to be, I want you to write down your Bible verse very, very neatly. And then I want you to illustrate it. 
That means draw pictures with it, put something with it that talks about it. It could be some hands. It could be some light that shows God. It could be things that you could do with your hands. And then when you finish, get your parents, or maybe you can, upload it to our Facebook page or send it to me in a text or an email and let me know that you did it. Okay? All right. Next, we're going to be going to our story. So take a moment, and if you need to, pause the video and quickly turn to Jonah. Okay? We'll wait for you. Hey, got your Bibles? Turn to Jonah yet? Okay, so I found some markers. If you guys have markers, if you don't, let me know. There's some markers. And I have some really, what is that? I have some chalk. And I have some, I found some crayon that I could use. So I was thinking that I would tell the story using an art medium. Do you know what an art medium is? Well, it's just something I can use in order to tell a story. In fact, I could tell a story. I might share a theory. Or I might capture the beauty of God's creation. So if I was really good at art and coloring, I could use that. Make sure that you're listening really good because some of this is in your activity sheet. So I could use art to tell a story or to share a feeling or to listen or capture the beauty of God's creation. And there's different things I could use for art. I could use markers. I could use paint brushes. I can use crayons. Other things that I could use to share a story that is art could be balloons. And for today, I brought some really neat balloons. Now, the only thing is, my balloons that I've been using are really old. So if it pops in front of you, just bear with us because I'm limited on my balloons. But I promise we'll be getting some more, okay? So there's this story that in Jonah, it's obviously Jonah. And Jonah was a prophet. You know what a prophet is? Well, a prophet is someone that God speaks to and to tell them things that will be happening in the future or that he's going to be telling things that are going to be going on right now. So the prophet Jonah, God came to him and said, Hey, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh, and I need you to go on a boat across the sea, and I need you to tell the people of Nineveh that they're so evil that if they don't turn back, I'm going to destroy them. <laughs> now, Jonah was a pretty smart guy. I mean, he had a good noggin on his head. Jonah got to thinking, he was like, No, God. Those people are so evil, there is no way I'm going. So Jonah said no. In fact, don't, Jonah didn't just say no. Jonah went to the boatyard. He found a boat going the other way, not going to Nineveh, and decided to get on it. Now Jonah got on that boat. And Jonah, we're going to make this little Jonah right here. Jonah got on the boat, and then Jonah got in the boat. And then Jonah got in the boat. Jonah got in the boat. I know that you can't really see him, but he's in there. Jonah got in the boat, and off they went. Now, those guys that are on the boat, they didn't know that Jonah was disobeying God. But then the storm started coming. And I don't know if you've ever been on a boat before when the storms are coming, but I have. And this boat goes up in the air and crashes back down and back up in the air and crashes. And in fact, I bet some of those guys on the boat were seasick, and they don't even get seasick. They were going up and crashing and up and crashing. And it looked like that the boat was just going to flip completely over. And Jonah went to the men on the boat. Or the, boat, the men on the boat went to Jonah. And they all got together and they, they told Jonah, they said, look, what's going on? And Jonah said, my God is mad at me. God is mad because I would not follow his orders and I wouldn't go where he told me to go. Well, the men started thinking. They were like, hey, well, do something. And Jonah said, God's not going to listen to you. In fact, if you would take and throw me over the boat, then God will take and calm the sea. <laughs> the men got to thinking about it and were like, hey, no, we can't do that. But then they decided since the boat was going to sink, that they had to do something. So they listened to Jonah and they threw him over the boat into the sea. And they threw him over the boat. We know the story. Those of you who know it, what happened? A big fish. Some think it was a whale. They're not for sure. But a big fish came and swallowed Jonah. And you can't see Jonah, but he's in there. So a big fish came and it swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of that fish for three whole days. Three days in a stinking belly of a fish or a whale that had rotten, inky, yucky, gross stuff. Now, I don't know about you, but rotten fish guts smells awful. But Jonah was there. And you know what he did while he was there? He prayed. 
And Jonah prayed and said, God, please help me. Because see, here's the thing. God has a call on each one of your lives. And God says, you can run, but you're not going to hide. And Jonah tried to hide in a boat. He tried to hide, but God knew where he was. And Jonah said, God, I'm here, and you know that I'm here in the well. And he prayed to God for three days. And at the end of the three days, that well got a big bellyache. And the well went up to shore. He went to shore, and he took Jonah, went to shore. And let's see if we can get this to do. He went to shore. I need to find my scissors. I know where they went. I'll use a pen. This will work, right? It's an art medium. Went to shore, and out came Jonah. <laughs> you see? He threw Jonah up on the beach. Now, Jonah didn't smell very good when he went up on the beach. So we're going to send this whale off somewhere. You can actually tie the ends if you want to practice this later. But we're going to send the whale off. Jonah went up on the shore, and Jonah went right into Nineveh. I'm sure, hopefully, he had a bath somewhere because he was pretty stinky. <laughs> he went into Nineveh, and he preached. And do you know what happened? Even though these people were so wicked, they changed their minds, they repented, and they turned their hearts over to God. And God spared Nineveh from dying. See, like Jonah, God has a plan for you. I don't know if that plan is to color with markers or if that plan is to color with crayons. I don't know if that plan is to use a pen or to use balloons. I don't know if that plan is to use your voice or to use an instrument. In my household, my kids have to practice everything because we don't know what God's complete plan is, but God does have a plan for you. Ever since my kids were very little, I would say to them, God has a plan, and they would repeat it after me, even at three years old. God has a big plan for me. And the same thing for you. God has a big plan for you, and he wants to use you. And even now, where you are at home, hanging out with your mom and your dad, you've been there forever, God has a plan for you. So this week, what I want us to do is remember that God has a plan to establish the work of our hands. And we can use art to tell a story. We can share our feelings. Sometimes if we're blue and we're upset, we can journal it. We can write it down. We can color it. We can use art to share our feelings. And we can use art to capture the beauty of God's creation. So maybe you're outside and it's all sunny and beautiful here in the Michigan, Ohio area. It's been really pretty lately. So maybe you're outside and you're like, oh, I want to capture God's creation. Do that. But don't forget that God has a plan for you. Know that we love you and that we're thinking about you and I have one more challenge, so stay tuned, okay? Hey, girls, we're almost at the end. I really want to close in prayer before we go, and then I want to give you your, your last challenge, okay? So if you would, if there's other people in the room, it's okay. Just go ahead and close your eyes. And why do we close our eyes? Sometimes it's basically just to cut out distractions. I know for myself, there's a lot of things I can get distracted with. <laughs> if you're anything like me, I get distracted very easily. So if you would, just close your eyes real quick. We're going to say a quick prayer. Father, I just pray for the girls and for even any parents or grandparents who are in the room listening. God, you have a big plan, and you have a plan for each and every one of our lives. And even during this crazy time when everything seems to be in turmoil, God, you still have a plan. So, Father, I pray that you can comfort each girl right where they are. No matter their situation, God, you bring them comfort and let them know that you have a plan. You see each and every one of them where they are in their living room, their bedroom. Maybe they're going down the road somewhere. Father, you see them. And Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that you would reach down right now and touch them. I pray that you touch them as they listen, Father, to me praying. And God, that you would remind them that you love them. And that, Father, that they would, if they, are not, they don't know you, that they would seek you out. And they would ask because your word says to ask. Seek and knock, and you will answer us. You will answer the door, and you will let us know what is going on. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, that they will ask, they will seek, and they will knock. And we worship you, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, girls. So here's one more challenge for you. So you've got your activity packets. If you don't, you'll be getting them soon. So what I want you to do is while you're doing the packet, I challenge you to get someone to take a picture of you doing the packet and then to send it to us email, Facebook, text message, or something. You're going to get points for that, but you get even more points if while you're doing your packet, since it's springtime, if you go outside and observe, if it's nice outside, obviously, you go outside to observe some of God's nature. Or if you're not, it's not out nice outside, sit by a window and enjoy even just the rain or that things are warming up. So just go outside. I'm not asking you to go break social distancing, 
but maybe just sit on your porch, or if you don't have a porch, sit by your balcony, or open a window or something, and do your passage, and enjoy some of God's creation. Then take, get someone to take a picture and send it to us. I want to see what you're doing and how things are going. Let us know if you have any prayer requests, or there's anything that we can help you with, or that we can do for you. Don't forget that we're going to be doing this again on Monday, so at the beginning of each week, letting you know challenge and catching up with you, letting you know what's going on for the rest of the week. Okay? I love you bunches, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.